Most future actuaries love to get practice problems right. It's a great sign that you're understanding the material and that you're on the right track. But what tends to upset future actuaries is when they get a problem wrong. It can feel really frustrating. It can feel like you just want to skip it and move on. And I made this mistake too. It was something I did all the time because I did not want to deal with those difficult questions that I had no idea how to handle them. But now my thoughts have changed. In my opinion now, the questions that you get right are actually the ones that are a waste of time. They're the useless ones. The ones that you get wrong are the gift. They're the ones that you should be happy to find. They're the ones you should get excited about. Because when you find one of these questions that you get wrong, it means that you're going to actually have the opportunity to improve and learn something new. It's going to help you increase your chances of passing your exam. When you find a practice problem that you don't know how to do or one that you get wrong, be happy about it. Because now you know the best use of your time in that moment. The best use of your time is going to be on doing these things. First, reviewing the solution to that practice problem and making sure you really understand it. Next is to figure out why your solution didn't work. That's equally as important as understanding why the actual solution does work. Then you're going to want to review that topic in your study material, especially if the solution is still not making complete sense. Keep on reviewing excessively until you do understand. Then you're going to redo the problem again without looking at the solution. And then finally, you're going to track that problem so that you can come back to it later. When you're studying for an actuarial exam, you most likely, or at least you probably should, do tons and tons and tons of practice problems. And this will help you really get comfortable with the types of questions you can expect on the exam and the types of ways and different ways that questions can be asked. What most people do and what I did in the beginning too was to take a topic and just do tons of practice problems on that one topic and then move on to another topic and do tons of practice problems on that topic and then move on again to a different topic and do tons of practice problems. So basically I was doing all my practice problems on one one topic and then another topic and then another topic. This is called the blocking approach. And what I have learned now after helping tons and tons of future actuaries in studying for their actuarial exams and also with my own studying as well is that this approach is not as effective as it could be. There's another approach called the interleaving approach. And with this approach, what you do is you first go through all the topics that you are learning for the exam and then you do tons of practice problems for all those topics. But the thing is you don't do them in sections. You don't do questions questions on one topic and then the next topic and then the next topic. Instead, you blend all the questions up together and you do them randomly. I know it can be tempting to try to study for two actuarial exams at the same time, but I highly recommend you do not do that. That's because if you try to prepare for two exams, you're going to have to spend double the amount of time studying every day, two times as much. And for most people, they have to spend about three to four hours every single day studying just for one exam. Now, if you have eight hours a day to study, then what I recommend you do is just, instead of studying for two exams, study for one and do it in a quicker time frame. Because otherwise, you're going to be studying for maybe four, five, or six months on two exams. Instead, study for one exam for three months and then another exam for three more months. Then you'll get them done in the same time. It's better to be fully prepared for one exam rather than partially prepared for two. You should be scoring 70% on practice problems when you're up to a month away from your exam. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. It means when you take a bunch of random practice problems, let's say you do 15 practice problems in a row, you should be scoring at least 70% on those or getting 70% of them right once you're 30 days from your exam. So once you are scoring 70% on your practice problems, then it's time to move on to practice exams. Now, my goal for members of the study strategy program is to make sure that they are getting 80% or higher on practice exams. It is really, 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 really important that you do tons and tons of practice exams. And if you're not reaching 80% or higher by one week out from your exam, then honestly, I would be a little concerned. 80% is a really good benchmark, and if you're reaching beyond that, then you have a really good chance of passing on exam day. Now, when I say exam conditions, 
What I mean is there's no distractions. You're doing this in a timed setting. So as you know, exam P and FM are all three hours long. So you want to make sure you're timing yourself just like you would be timed on the real exam. And also there's no formula sheets. Take all those things into consideration. You want to make sure you are doing these exams in exam conditions and you're getting 80% or higher on those exams. And that's a milestone you want to reach by about one week before your exam. Go and do your practice exams in different areas throughout your community. So of course, when you're studying for an actuarial exam, you need to do tons of practice exams to really get comfortable with the time limits, to get comfortable with answering questions quickly and just being in that kind of exam setting. But if you do all those practice exams in the exact same place, let's say it's the office in your house, well, you're gonna get really comfortable doing them there. But when you go to the exam center and you're in a totally new environment that you've never been in, before and you're trying to do the exam in that situation, you might find it's a really difficult thing to do because you're just not comfortable doing exams in different places. You may not be comfortable with hearing some chit chat in the background. Yes, unfortunately, when you do actuarial exams, sometimes there are going to be minor distractions in the background. So you have to be able to tune those out and continue to work on your exam. What I recommend is that you spend about five minutes at the beginning of your exam going through all the questions and breaking them down into different categories. Now category one is going to be the questions that you know how to answer and you think that you can do it within six minutes. The second category is questions that you think you know how to answer but you don't know if you'll be able to do it within six minutes. Now the third category is all the questions that you have no idea how to answer at all. Now you're going to break it down into those three categories. So once you've done that what you're going to do is you're going to start with the questions that you have labeled in category one. Those are the questions that you know how to do and you know you can do them quickly. Once once you get all those questions out of the way, you're going to start moving on to the questions that you know how to do, but you're really not 100% sure if you can get them done within six minutes. You're definitely going to try to get them done within that time frame, but you might not be able to. Hopefully, by going through the questions in category one first, you've been able to answer some of those in less than six minutes, so you have a little bit of extra time to dedicate to these questions that you have marked into category two. Okay, after that, you're going to move on to category three. Those are the most difficult questions, and honestly, since you don't know how to solve those ones, you might end up guessing on those. Hopefully, there's not very many in that category. If you go through your exam with this type of a strategy, it means that you're leaving those difficult questions that you don't know how to do, you're leaving them to the end. So it's really not a big deal or a loss of points for you if you don't get to them, because you probably didn't know how to answer them anyway. That's much better than just going into the exam and answering every question in order because if you leave five questions at the end that you know how to answer but you don't get to them that means that you're leaving points on the table and you don't want to do that never ever ever spend more than one minute during your actuarial exam stuck on a problem now for me this was something I really had to get over a lot of the time when I see a problem if I know how to do it but I'm just feeling sort of stuck I really just want to sit there and try to figure out how to do it but when you're under time constraints only three hours to get 30 questions done you don't want to be wasting time just thinking they're doing nothing. So never spend more than one minute stuck on a problem. If you're feeling like you just don't know exactly how to continue, then move on to the next question and come back to that question later. Now when you come back to that question, here's what's really important. Don't use the same work or even the same page that you did when you first tried to solve that problem. Use a brand new blank page and start the problem over from scratch. Sometimes in that minute you just can't see how to come to the right solution. But when you come back to it with a more fresh mind, once you've stopped thinking about it for a little bit, you can get it really quickly. Now, let's think about what failing really means. This is something that I have to remind myself of too, because it doesn't just apply to actuarial exams. It really applies to anything in your life where you feel like you failed or you didn't meet the expectations that you had for yourself. Failing is never a bad thing. Yes, it often means that you have to delay your goals and it takes a bit longer than you originally intended, but what's the big rush anyway? There's no rush in order to become an actuary, right? So this is just one small blip in that plan. We need to interpret failure differently. Failure just means one thing. 
one thing. It means that you didn't do something right. I know, it seems a bit too simple, right? You just didn't do something right. And that's all, that's what failure means. And that's okay because there's still time for you to figure out what that thing is. There's still time for you to try again. And once you figure out what you did do wrong, you can change it, move on, pass your exam, and you'll be able to achieve this goal. So now you just really have to discover what that thing is, or maybe it was multiple things that you did wrong and that you have to change for next time. So let's think about that. What are you going to do differently next time? When I'm working with aspiring actuaries, there are really two things that tend to cause them to fail. The first one is their study strategy. Sometimes aspiring actuaries just don't know what they need to do in order to fully and properly prepare for an actuarial exam. These exams are so much different than any other exam that you've probably taken in the past. So having a study strategy that is designed for actuarial exams is really important. And that's something that a lot of aspiring actuaries just don't realize in the beginning. The second reason that I see aspiring actuaries fail is because they just didn't spend enough time studying or they didn't fit enough time into their schedule to fully understand the material. Studying for actuarial exams is often one of the most time consuming things for any future actuary in their day to day life. If you've been feeling like studying is all consuming these days, like you have no time to do anything else and your to do's are piling up, making it feel almost impossible to actually catch up. Well, if that's the case, I have a message to share with you. Find out what it is by going to watch this video next.